Is it bad that I can clasp my hands behind my back? No, that's good. That means you have good <laughs> range of motion. In fact, we do the special test when we check for shoulder mobility called the Apley Scratch Test, where you reach with both arms, we mark it off, we see what your abilities are, and we can understand which part of the rotator cuff or otherwise is impacted, causing your restriction in motion. Max West, how much money do you make? Uh -huh. Enough to feed Bear for the rest of his life and get him all the toys his little heart could ever desire. Can you develop an allergy later in life or can you get over an allergy that you were born with? I'm allergic to my new cat and was wondering if I'll grow out of it. It is possible. Prime example, people who come to my office and frequently say they have a penicillin allergy and we know we still need to give them penicillin, I'll send them to an allergist and we find out that a huge percentage, it's over 50%, have actually grown out of a penicillin allergy or never had one to begin with. So yes, you could absolutely grow out of them and yes, you could absolutely develop them. Heather Mikulich, What's happening when my ears pop? Nothing's actually popping, is it? What you're probably feeling is your eustachian tube popping, which is a very thin tube that connects your sinuses to your ear. And that tube is actually quite small. So if you have pressure gradients between your ear and your sinuses, especially if you're going up elevations, the popping feeling is just that eustachian tube kind of releasing the pressure. Shin Shin. Cow's milk, almond milk, skim milk, whole milk, fat-free, which milk do you recommend we drink? It depends. To me, if you're not over drinking any of these milks and you don't have a medical condition, you're probably fine. So like drink whichever one you enjoy, especially in moderation. Something I will note is like almond milk doesn't have a lot of nutrition value. It does have some sodium content, so just be wary of that. Cecilia Ann from the Discord. What's the deal with a sugar rush? Does it really affect kids and adults differently? Sugar rush? Made up thing. Grandparents used to see kids eat a lot of sugar and then be hyper and then blame it on the sugar. That is the prime example of correlation, not causation. Kids are hyper. After they eat, they stay hyper. So it's not the sugar making them hyper, it's their age. It's the fact that they have high energy levels, nothing to do with the sugar. There is some truth to sugar causing a crash because after you eat a lot of sugar, your body has to take that sugar from your blood and move it into your cells. It does that through insulin. When you get an insulin spike, you kind of feel a little sleepy, a little bit drowsy, a little bit more tired. A sugar crash is real. A sugar rush is not real at all. Renee Discord, why are some people able to eat a lot and never put on weight while other people can put on weight so quickly? Metabolism is a big answer here. Hormonal systems, natural tendencies, like I'm sitting here and you can't see my legs, but I'm actually shaking my legs. And it's been proven that those people who sit there and shake their legs actually burn more calories throughout the day because it's a process that happens over a long period of time. So there's a lot of individual factors that decide someone's weight. Factors that we don't think about and we don't give enough weight to is, ironic that I said weight, twice. Our mental health. If we're struggling with depression, we may overeat to compensate to feel better. If we're battling with generalized anxiety disorders, we may undereat because we're so nervous and not thinking about eating. Never lose that component. Grinding, 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 green, grain, grain, grain. I keep throwing up every time I eat prawn, shrimp, crab, scallops, oyster, crab, lobsters. What do I do? Why was crab listed twice? That's my question. Um, but then again, you have grinding three times in your name, so that makes sense. What should you do? Don't eat it. I know you're probably saying, like, do you have a shellfish allergy or something? But while possible, I can't diagnose you based off just that little factoid. What I will say is if you have true anaphylaxis, vomiting can be a symptom of anaphylaxis. I need to know more. Liana from Discord, should I swap out all white bread, rice, grains for brown instead? Okay, so the color thing about the bread is important to talk about. If you're a person who's looking to have more fiber in their diet, someone who's looking for better control of their sugar, meaning less spikes, less crashes, you're a person that would probably fare better by having a whole grain food instead of a white food. But at the end of the day, it's still a carb. And if you're overeating carbs, even if they're whole grains, you still might run into a problem. So you need to be very careful when you say this food versus that food, because the question I'll always ask you right back is why? How come salt on a slug or something will kill it, but I can, well, I have no idea. <laughs> How would I know about slugs? Prime time. Is it dangerous to eat too much fruit because it still contains so much sugar? Is it dangerous to consume fruit because it has sugar? I would say no, because there's fiber content there, there's other nutrients there, and it's really hard to like eat 30 bananas. So I think if you have some foods and you don't have, you know, uncontrolled diabetes, you're fine eating sugar that comes from plants. Just stay away from the juices, because when you have one orange, that's like, you know, whatever, 10 grams of sugar. But then when you make a, a juice, you need to put like six oranges in there to make a cup full. That's a ton of sugar. Lala Zula how much water should I really drink every day? Like drinking when you're thirsty versus just drinking a certain number of cups a day. There is no universal 
eight glasses a day, two liters a day, all that is nonsense. Those are like averages that don't mean anything to you as a human. Also, something you really, really have to think about is it's not just about consuming cups of water. When you eat fruit, there's water intake in there. You drink tea, there's water in there. You even drink soda, even though I'm not a fan. There's water in there. You're hydrating yourself. So you have to take all of that into consideration. Then, the way that I would tell my patients to judge whether or not they're well hydrated is through their pee. If your pee is really dark in color, with, with stand, withstanding, without standing, now withstanding having a medical illness. If you're completely healthy and your urine's dark, that means you could use more water intake. If your urine is clear all the time, maybe you don't need to be drinking so much because you're over drinking. Because the ideal urine color that you want to aim for is like a pale straw colored yellow. And if it's that all the time, you're doing a great job. Know that. When you're exercising, especially in heat, you need more water. Know that if you have a fever, you need more water. Know that if you're just sitting at home all day, maybe you don't need as much water as when you are exercising. All things to keep in mind. Ines, can the smell of your sweat tell you something about your health? It can, I have actually a whole video on a woman who can smell certain illnesses. That goes to show that this nose of ours is actually not a smell detector. Well, it is a smell detector, but it's really a chemical detector. It can sense certain compounds in our sweat that when excreted during illness, some people are sharp enough to pick it up. Dom Lopez, why does Gatorade have so much sugar? Is it necessary for the Gatorade to work or is it to taste good? Gatorade is a sports drink. It's meant to be consumed during intense exercise when two things are happening. You're burning a ton of calories and you're sweating a lot. What do you need to do? You need to replace those calories and you need to replace your electrolytes. Gatorade has both of those ingredients in there. When you actively run, punch, lift weight, what you're doing is you're burning the sugar that is actually in your muscles. And that sugar needs to be repleted, and we do so by consuming Gatorade. Now, if you're a person just sitting on the couch playing a video game and you're drinking Gatorade, you're essentially taking all that sugar and just storing it and not actively using it so it can be a source of unnecessary weight gain for individuals. Arex449, what's better for your health, real meat or fake meat? If I think they both taste just as good, should I eat one over the other? Such an individualized question because it depends on what your goals are, what you're looking to achieve. That being said, there is a myth being propagated right now stating that all vegan meat is actually super healthy. That's not true. Are there benefits to eating plant-based meats? Yeah, absolutely. Better for the environment. You're not consuming animal products, less cholesterol in there. At the end of the day, a plant-based burger is still a burger. There's still a ton of salt in there, preservatives. It still technically falls into the category of junk food. Don't put it into the category of health food because it's not. Agent Orange 666, what are some ways for me to stop snoring? A, find out why you're snoring. There's multiple reasons. B, if you have sleep apnea and you get diagnosed with it, you could use a CPAP machine, which essentially keeps pressure in your airway, even when you're relaxed, in order to prevent it from collapsing and causing you to wake up from a lack of breathing. Michael, I'm taking antibiotics. Should I eat a probiotic yogurt? C. Yes. Yes. Da. Yes. We. Oui. Yes. I wish I knew more languages. Um, you should. In fact, I tell my patients that when they are on antibiotics that they should either take a probiotic or a yogurt or kimchi or sauerkraut because it replaces some of the good bacteria that's negatively impacted by the antibiotics you're taking. Remember, antibiotics target only bacteria, not viruses, not fungi. But you have bacteria in your body that actually helps you live, helps you get nutrition out of food, lives on your skin and prevents the overgrowth of bad bacteria. When you take antibiotics, they don't discriminate. They kill the good stuff along with the bad stuff. So you want to replace the good stuff by taking a probiotic. How often should you be showering? Turns out you might be showering too much. Click here to find out. And as always, stay happy and healthy.